This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Health One. Good morning, this is Nick Sippis with another quick toxicology review in anticipation of our upcoming unfiltered podcast with Dr. Chris Hoyt. Uh, excited to do a quick uh, series of reviews on toxicology subjects. We've done arsenic and I'd like to touch briefly on cyanide this morning. Uh, so cyanide comes from a number of places. One of the classic places we think of is from smoke inhalation, particularly a fire in which there are plastic compounds that are being burned. There's also a number of other ways that you can be exposed to cyanide. Industrial uh, cyanide salts are used. There's obviously the chemical uh, warfare component to this, uh, as well as a number of other possible uh, places where uh, you can be exposed to cyanide. Uh, on a cellular level, uh, essentially cyanide causes profound lactic acidosis. It uh, binds to cytochrome oxidase. Oh my God, my head's starting to hurt. I'm thinking it's organic chemistry again, uh, but it promotes uh, anaerobic metabolism. So uh, the uh, uh, cyanide is, 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 is cl classically shows up uh, with the presentation of a rapid loss of consciousness and seizures from profound lact lactic acidosis and anoxia. Um, it's a relatively rapid onset. Uh, there are ways in which more mild exposures can present, more vague symptomatology like nausea, vomiting, and headache. Obviously, uh, obtaining a good history helps with this about any potential exposures. Um, but severe severe exposures have, uh, you know, this presentation of anaerobic metabolism causing uh, hypotension, bradycardia, acidosis, respiratory depression, uh, coma or reduced GCS, and eventually um, and seizures. Um, there's a classic uh, report that you may be able to, there may be an almond smell or a bitter almond smell. If you've recently had COVID or if you're like me and you can't smell anything, this doesn't help you. I can't even smell ketones with DKA, but that is, that has been documented. Uh, they tend to appear kind of pink and flushed, uh, particularly after you give them uh, supplemental oxygen. Your work up here is most remarkable for a profound lactic acidosis, uh, you know, without any, uh, infectious signs or symptoms per se. Obviously, if this is done in the conjunction, uh, or if the workup is in conjunction with a burn or a severe burn, a lot of times in the pre-hospital setting, they'll have already been treated. Uh, but uh, but you can, you can correlate a cyanide level of greater than 40 micromoles per liter with a lactate greater than 10. Um, you also can use uh, the loss of a differential in your, uh, o your circulating O2 between an ABG and a VBG. Uh, I won't get too much in the weeds with this, but essentially, you know, you're, you're at the cellular level, you are not uptaking oxygen to participate in aerobic metabolism like you normally would. And so there will be an unusual equilibration of the pressure of O2 between an arterial and a venous sample. Um, so that's an interesting kind of quirky laboratory evaluation uh, that, uh, that can help you, that can signal to this. Management, obviously, uh, as we talk about in, in, in any exposure, is uh, removing the, the patient from the initial exposure, uh, uh, attending to the ABCs as appropriately, certainly. There's a lot of... Uh, hemodynamic support uh, using uh, vasopressors if needed. Uh, and then the antidote, uh, board question, the antidote to cyanide poisoning is hydroxycobalamin. A lot of our listeners are pre-hospital folks, and they do not need to be told this. They know, uh, particularly our fire colleagues. Um, so you give hydroxycobalamin and then sodium thiosulfate. Uh, we can uh, talk about how, how that works exactly. But uh, anyways, you, you have to give those in conjunction with continued supportive care and monitoring fluid resuscitation. You've got to treat any simultaneous injuries like burns and smoke inhalation. Uh, and then a lot of these folks are going up to the ICU because of their profound uh, critical, critical acidosis. They eventually will hopefully have normalization of their blood gases. Um, and, and, and will do better if, if diagnosed early and treated early, as we've been saying, uh, on all these toxicology reviews, uh, we're always going to want to evaluate and treat these folks and reevaluate these folks in conjunction with our poison center colleagues. Um, and, uh, uh, uh and these folks can, can be, can be quite sick. So, uh, lots of interesting, uh, um, 
uh, pathophysiology and basic basic science background on uh, life in the fast lane uh, review of this. Thanks to Dr. Chris Nixon uh, from Melbourne, Australia, who did a great review. Uh, we'll link it to it in the show notes. Uh, but uh, that's a quick review on cyanide poisoning. Thanks a lot. Look forward to the unfiltered episode with Chris Hoyt coming up soon. Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Bradley, anesthesiologist and U.S. Naval officer. I'm also the host and creator of the Black Doctors podcast. This podcast provides weekly 30-minute episodes that tell the stories of minority healthcare professionals. It is my hope that hearing these unique and inspiring stories will encourage others to consider pursuing these challenging and rewarding career paths. So please join me for the Black Doctors podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all major streaming platforms.